Uh, but it, it seems to be a fairly common uh, thing in, in any of these inflamed stress corneas. Do you have any thoughts on that, Larry? Yeah. 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 So one of the things you learn when you look at these is trying to get a sense of, you, you, you get a, a sense after a while. It's kind of like all pathology. When you look at images, you have to know how to interpret them and how to read them correctly. And the, these aren't nerves, for example, and these are not crystalline structures, and these are not fungal structures. It's just this is what you see in edema. Um, now, so that was a bacterial. Now. These are two slit lamp photos from the same patient. And you see this kind of funny looking patchiness here. You can see it here. I hope, yeah, good. Okay, they've got a good screen. You can see it. And also, you can sense almost, um, almost a Meesman's like look over here. That, that kind of tiny little vacuoles. But it's not Meesman's. I'm, I'm not saying it is. But it, so this, this, um, this is how this patient presented. Uh, this is all light artifact down here. Uh, but but if you look up here, you can see this. So, um, any guesses? No, no, I know, I didn't know. I mean, I didn't know what it was. So again, yeah. So we said, okay, well, let's put it on the confocal and see if we can find something. Look at that. So it turned out that was acanthamoeba. Very, very early acanthamoeba. Uh, very, basically, as far, we couldn't visualize any cyst below the epithelial level, so we think we were catching it extremely early. But she had the history, I didn't tell you any of the history. Contact lens use, uh, some redness, getting a little worse, uh, treated briefly as a possible herpes, uh, but funny looking. You know, it certainly didn't look like herpes. It just, but it didn't, it looked like ratty epithelium, was it really looked like. So. Um, now, I'll show you another um, case that's a little bit more obvious. This one, uh, this was a 15-year-old girl, uh, had a history of three, maybe four weeks of red eye. She was a soft contact lens wearer, and she'd been diagnosed with a herpes simplex and been on anti-herpetic treatment for, I think it was two and a half weeks at this point, and getting worse, not better. So when you look at these two photos, you can see she's pretty injected uh, over here. Uh, you see the these hazy, kind of patchy haze, um, and you see that over here as well. So um, you have a better idea what this is, right, based on, hey, Louis. <laughs> um, and sure enough, another acanthamoeba uh, down, you see a cyst down here. So again, though, catching it fairly early, this is an inflammatory cell probably right here. And this, this one, what was remarkable, actually, I think I've got a, one other thing. This is a not, unfortunately, none of our slit photos of this really showed up, but she had a very distinct uh, inflamed nerve coming in here uh, along this line. And, you could, it, and sure enough, we were able to, we saw this on the on the confocal, and uh, these just she just lit up everywhere uh, with these these things that you know if you might wonder if it's fungus uh, because there were just so many and they were so prominent, but it, it turned out it was all it was inflamed nerves. She was culture positive uh, for acanthamoeba, uh, but you know both of these cases and the, and the take home point I was trying to make was that this allowed us to make the diagnosis uh, quickly. Um, oh yeah, here's another one. Same thing. You see the epithelium here. So this and this is just subepithelial, and you see these huge inflamed. Normally, you don't see this many nerves. I mean, this is really just lit up. I've never seen any. It's just in the, I've never had another case quite like this one. Uh, and as I said, culture positive, and because as we were able to get it early and be confident in the diagnosis, we started treatment that day with everything. And one week later, she comes back. Look at how, she's still inflamed, but look at this, just one week later, she's a lot less red. She's still got some patchy haze, but it's starting to clear. And this girl ended up 2020 with absolutely no residual pathology. And, you know, and I have to say, you have to credit the, the confocal because, you know, the, the original diagnosis was herpes. Uh, the, and there was really, it was peculiar enough that you wouldn't, you'd get suspicious about acanthamoeba and you might culture it, but, but we saved days at least, and, uh, and it really, I think, made a difference for her and for that earlier patient in terms of being able to make that diagnosis uh, with, with certainty. Because once you see those cysts, 
there's nothing else. The cysts are by and large going to be anterior. These were very early, so they were basically in the epithelial area. Um, later they start to work their way down a little bit, but, but mostly you're going to look in the front of the eye. Uh, now this is a, um, another uh, version of contact lens uh, misadventure. Uh, this was a 47-year-old male who was a soft contact lens wearer. Uh, dense, dense infiltrate. And unfortunately, not knowing that I would actually want this for presentation, we never took a slit lamp photo because he just had a huge, dense, you know, run-of-the-mill dense infiltrate. But he had a very cool OCT because uh, you can't see this. This whole area was opaque in front. So we did this OCT and you see this funnel of fibrin coming out of the pupil going up to the endothelium. Because uh, here's the iris, and there's the pupil. So huge plaque here, lots of fibrin going on. Um, again, and this is the most common thing, you know, the, the big three that confuse people, it's herpes, fungus, and acanthamoeba. 99% uh, of these, these confusing cases are going to be one of those three things. And the most common thing that people think it is early on is herpes, and they come to the other diagnoses later. As Larry knows, that's when, you, that's when they send them in you, right, when they've been on herpes treatment and they haven't gotten better. Uh, and uh, so in this particular case, uh, on questioning, well, let me show you this first. So we did a confocal, and this is classic fusarium. Uh, you see the basically about a 45 degree angle branching pattern, and his stroma down deeper was loaded with this. So because of the depth, you know, there's, there's no issue that it's nerve, even though the nerves don't quite look like this. But, uh, but it's classic branching structure from Fusarium. So again, we never did culture fungus off of this guy. What we did do is get it off of his contact lens solution and, and the, the, what was actually going on with him. And he brought in, uh, I knew, we made the diagnosis right away, and I said, when you come in tomorrow so we can see how you're, how you're doing and how you're responding, because we followed this guy every day for weeks. Uh, I had him bring his bottle. It turned out, he, and he was a very, he was a aeronautical engineer for McDonald Douglas. He's a smart guy, but he was, and I, I read the bottle myself, and I realized why he was so confused. He was using non-preserved saline as his contact lens storage solution. And, and, there, and but, but the, when you read the bottle, there was so much verbiage about that when you sorted through all the baloney, it was saying it was to be used in conjunction with the storage solution. It was to rinse the lens afterward. But it, it never really said that. And I, it, I had to read the label for three minutes to figure out what was wrong. So we cultured the fluid, and it was loaded with fusarium. So, that's a, so we did confirm it that way. But it, uh, uh, it shows you how these poor people get in trouble with the confusion you know, of all these products that are on the, um, on the shelf. So. So in summary, um, you know, there, as I said, there doesn't you can you can use this to image dystrophies. You can use it for a lot of different things. But I think in in clinical practice, the the big the big thing that it really helps you with is uh, these challenging endothelial evaluations, uh, where a regular specular microscope uh, doesn't do the job, and you get these beautiful pictures, and an infectious keratitis for fungus and acanthamoeba. Uh, it can it is really just no substitute for it. So that's why. That's why we have one. Um, we don't use it every day, but when we need it, there is no substitute. So, any, um, those are all the pretty pictures I have to show for today, but uh, any um, questions or discussion? No, well, thank you very much. Thank you.